Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Jack is back. We're talking Jack Cooper Transport. We have an exclusive live interview tonight with Kurt DeRoy, Chief Commercial Officer at Jack Cooper Transport. Before that is going to be Larry Veliquette with Automotive News talking changing vehicle inventory. This is a big show. And Ty is with us too. So bring your questions and buckle in. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You guys can uh, you can see me and hear me okay? I think my levels are all right. Listen, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. And again, just checking my levels, but please let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. I think we're good. And hey, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you what's happening tonight. Number one, if this is your first time here, please feel welcome. Please do say hello to the live chat and feel like you can talk to other people, promote your company, product, or service. We're not all cardboard cutouts. Please do say hello. This is the auto transport ecosystem, and you're a big part of it. So then we're going to go into industry news. I'm going to say hello to the live chat in a few minutes. Then we'll go into industry news. Industry news is... National news, social media news, uh, carriers, OEMs, dealers, what's happening in the marketplace, Facebook, LinkedIn, what have you. Okay, perfect. We're, you're good? Okay, good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me know. We are going to go into our first interview tonight at about the 45-minute mark. Changes in vehicle inventory with Larry Veliquette of Automotive News. I'm so thankful that Larry's going to spend some time with us talking about vehicle inventory. And you're going to see more information about this in industry news. Then we're going to go to the exclusive interview with Kurt DeRoy, Chief Commercial Officer at Jack Cooper Transport. Uh, Kurt is waiting in the wings. He's excited to uh, talk to us tonight. We're lucky to have him. It's a big moment for the auto transport industry. Um, it's going to be great to hear what's going on uh, with Jack Cooper. And I looked up, so the inception of Jack Cooper was 1928, is that right? Oh my goodness. That is a long time ago, so it would be great to get caught up. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to go into the live chat, but before I do, I want you to stick around. This is going to be a good show. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads? when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's Murphy Auto Transport. 31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today.
That is the voice of Sue at Murphy Auto Transport. Uh, you got a phone number, you got an email address, and a website that's going in the live chat right now. If you need a dispatcher, I get dispatching questions all the time. That's what Sue specializes in. She has a dispatch office and she's a professional broker with a broker's license. So ask her a question. She wants to help. And there's your information. So it's time to go into the live chat. Let's do that, guys. Uh, please do say hello in the live chat. Now, I got to rewind to the beginning. But if you post, you'll see it on the screen. Perfect. It's coming through. All right. So Ty Thompson was here first. Anyone know where Jack is? Well, Ty, Jack is back. And he's with us tonight. Uh, Mark Grodeke, I wonder if he's looking at his lot, wondering if there's any advanced technology to help his trucks not return to his lot empty. You know what's cool, Mark? We got a video coming up. It's the Da Vinci tool, and we're going to watch this video together, and um, it's going to answer that question and more. Um, Jay, Ty, Mark from Superflow, what's up? Mark, thank you for announcing your company. Please do say that if if you put something in the live chat, please do mention your company. Where, what you're looking for? What's going on with you? Are you on a route that's making money? Are you, you know, are you stuck somewhere? Let us know. Um, Shaw Auto Carriers, greetings all. What's up, Shaw Auto Carriers? Thanks for tuning in again. Curtis Rhodes is here. What's up, Curtis? Thanks for saying hello. Carlos Braxton, hello everyone from the basement in Williamsburg, Virginia. ACB Logistics. What's up, Carlos? Part of the core. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I love car shipping. Hello, family. Greetings from Jacksonville. What's up? Hashtag Port Life. Nobody does that. Geez, I'm under the wrong stage name. I noticed that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, but it's candy. It's candy at Seaport Service. Candy's in the house, Mark says. Seaport Service. Okay, now she's she's come back in. Uh, Kimberly is here. Thank you, Kimberly, for helping out in the live chat. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Um, it's a, it's a big deal. Thank you so much. Let's see, Mark, I have a love song to sing to you after the show. Okay, maybe we should make that live. Danny B is here with us. What's up, Danny B? Hello, folks. Hey, Danny B, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Michael Culler, what's up? Um, you can see us, you can hear us. Excellent, five by five in the pipe. Where's the chips and beer? Um, uh, at your place. <laughs> is going to be the answer. Um, let's see here. Bill Bad Apples is here. What's up, Bill? Thanks for tuning in. Saying hello. Gerard is here. What's up, Gerard? Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Give you a siren. There's the information for Sue. Ah, Nick Medor, color coordinating your t-shirt with the theme of the show. Well, I'll tell you what, and that is, here we go. So this is courtesy of Jack Hooper. Um, and they sent me a care package. I got the stickers and I've got the logos and, you know, Jack is back. Actually, because it's great news. And that's, yeah, that's what this show is all about. So um, so thanks for pointing that out. It made that easy. Well done. Um, Cooper started with GM in 1928. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Buy Kim a drink. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ty. You know what? I'm going to do that. And uh, I believe we've got some sushi money in the kitty. So that'll be cool, too. Thank you so much. Um, C. Los, hey, from Manhattan, NYC. What's up, C. Los? It's good to hear from you. Thanks for saying hello in the live chat. FNS Trucking, hey, Jay and Car, people from PA. What's up, FNS? And we've seen FNS in Dispatching Live. Um, be sure to take advantage of the other live shows. Thursday's Dispatching Live, Friday's Cars on the Move. Now, this is the flagship. You're here on a Tuesday night. This is the experts and the interviews. Uh, Craig Hinshaw's with us. What's up, Craig? Thanks for saying hello. Hello from Real Force Transport, Christmas, Florida. What's up, Brian? Thanks for saying hello and tuning in. Tiffany Shotwell, Superior One Truck Company in Indiana. All right, there we go. Thanks for information and tuning in, Tiffany. That's cool. Ooh, a care package. How did you know? That's right. Okay, so we're at 810. Anybody else, if you want to get in on the live chat, uh, we'll give it about another minute. The purpose of this show 
um, again, it's it's Jack is back, and it's it's really cool that um, you know it takes a while to coordinate a large interview like this. So we're really excited that tonight is the night. Um, and before the interview, because Kurt Kurt doesn't have a full evening, he doesn't have the time. So I've got this is amazing. I've got um, Larry Veliket of Automotive News. He's a reporter. Lucky to get him on the show where we're talking about vehicle inventory, then we're talking about vehicle assets. Because what is going on in the current state of the market? Um, I'm going to save that for when Larry is here because he's the reporter. But you have noticed a lot has changed from the last few months. And I'm not just, just talking about the virus. The automotive industry is on a ride. We, and, we, you know... What is going to happen next? Actually, I'm going to let Larry talk about that and give that answer. But, I mean, it is, it's a ride. And um, so many factors going into all of these changes, it's, it is something else. And that's another reason why I tune in. People are still, there's still, there's still an opportunity to say hello in the live chat. Thank you guys so much. Um... The, I've noticed that you know the auto transport industry actually gets talked about quite a bit in other circles without being a key topic. And that's a strange thing, too. Um, I actually, I shared, and I don't know where I put that, about, tra oh, solving, I, I posted on LinkedIn. I wonder if I can bring that up here. I posted on LinkedIn about the need to um, solve auto transportation issues here we go bring just bring that now that's not what we wanted there we go i posted this on linkedin solving transportation issues is it the technology is it the rates is it covid we need to talk and i plan on putting this show together with a panel because i heard a lot of talk about transportation issues but then it's like you know man we got this serious problem transportation issues so anyways let's talk about uh physical auctions again and we and we and we don't we don't finish the topic we don't get to the meat of the problem and we need to do that and so the purpose of auto transport intel just seems to grow and grow and i'm so happy that this is the channel where we're gonna we're gonna try to cover some of these problems topics have these panels have these dis these discussions and you guys are a big part of it like i said i mean the live chat really helps me um you know focus on what's going on with you guys with the community with the ecosystem reading a great book race to outhouse by willie make it and betty won't <laughs> jack is for jack cooper transport i've worked with them for going on 10 years i run their network which would include driver routing supplemental backhauls and brokering out our surges wow curtis that's awesome that is awesome thank you for sharing that see it's amazing and that's why the live chat helps so much in knowing where each of you is coming from what you want to talk about what's going on and again please do tune in to the other live shows dispatching live on thursdays at noon cars on the move on fridays at noon dispatching live is all about loads cars on the move is all about networking so we want you to join us for that here's what i want to do uh oh Let's do this, and then we're going to be back with some industry news. Please stick around. Assertus, relentless drive to deliver. Last mile delivery. Vehicle transport. Vehicle storage. In storage care and maintenance. Compliance services. In transit title and registration. Home delivery. Find out more at AssertusDelivers.com. Have you been to AssertusDelivers.com? Do you know all that Assertus does? Vehicle transport, storage, care, compliance, home delivery, and title and registration. That's a lot. And in fact, as we're going to talk about again, I think a little bit more in industry news, that is where the automotive industry is really headed. So, um, it's not enough. I mean, it can be enough. You can be a driver. Sure. You can be a driver and just have, have a route, one truck. Absolutely. But if you're looking to grow the business, uh, Assertus is showing how and what it takes to really grow into a nationwide 
fleet management service company. So check that out. Go to AssertusDelivers.com and uh, find out more. All right, it is time. Let's go into industry news. This is the Jack is Back show. This is episode 152, and we've got Kurt DeRoy, Chief Commercial Officer from Jack Cooper Transport, giving us an interview. Um, here's a, oh, this is a collage. Thank you, Kimberly. Kimberly put together a collage of the Jack Cooper uh, photos and information. It's, it's its own ecosystem. I mean, Jack Cooper's a big company. And you know that I identified... This was, I don't know, a few weeks ago. I finally identified the 10 verticals as I see it in the auto transport industry ecosystem. So tonight, we're looking at the carriers, the equipment, working with the OEMs, auctions, and the dealers. And if, you know, most of you will know this, but I put it kind of in certain terms because I'm trying to educate, help educate shippers, brokers, etc. We need a lot better education. The gossip isn't going to cut it. Driver recruiting is happening. So if you want to learn more about driver recruiting at Jack Cooper, we're going to talk about that tonight. This is pretty cool. Jack Cooper is on the... Okay, so you go to podwheelsnetwork.com. I think that's right. And you can uh, listen to this podcast. Very cool. So they're reaching out, putting out information. Uh, a website with employee engagement, diversity, and inclusion. Really working on building the community and ecosystem. Jack Cooper University will launch on September 4th. Very cool. Find out what that's all about. Welcome to the Jack Cooper Employee News Site. That's pretty cool. This is a great way to get your car shipping news on Auto Transport Intel on the big screen. Before we talk to Kurt, this is Larry Veliket. Now, Larry Valiquette is an automotive news reporter, and I met him because I listened to the Daily Drive podcast, and I found this to be a great interview with Larry, and I wanted to talk to him and see if we could get him to talk more about, this is an article by Larry, Restocking Dealer, Lots of Tough Task for the Industry. Uh, and so he's going to talk to us tonight. Now, this is another, Have you? this is a good, you know, I, I thank you, Automotive News, do you listen to the Daily Drive podcast? If you have it, check it out. I listened to this one. That was interesting, too. What's it like to ride in a new Ford Bronco? Boy, Bro Ford Bronco's got a lot of momentum right now. How about the um, Ford Electric F-150? They're building a new factory for it. The company's constructing a new facility to build the electric pickup next to an existing factory in Dearborn, Michigan. Ford will begin producing prototype versions next year. Full production expected to begin the second or third quarter 2022. It's going to be good to know. Do you feel overwhelmed? <laughs> You'll notice I don't have a cat lady meme tonight. Um, but you can feel overwhelmed. There's a lot to keep up on. Or you, maybe you're just, maybe this is how your load is going right now. Tell me, I want to know. Let's check it in the live chat. What do we got going on here? Oh, Moozy's here. What's up, Moozy? Moozy from Truckify. Are you overwhelmed, guys? Oh, well, that's okay. Hashtag not my problem. That's so kin. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know this. I don't get it. What happened here? I mean, it wasn't tied down, but right? It was not strapped down very well. Looks like it came loose. Or you could do it this way. You don't need that. Uh, who needs that rear glass intact? Did you see the video of the flip of the week? Um, yeah, you may have. It was all over Facebook. Flip of the week. Speaking of, it's Break Safety Week. Are you aware of this? It's happening now. Uh, they're checking brake system components, always part of the roadside inspection process. And look at this statistic. During last year's International Road Check Inspection Enforcement Initiative, brake system and brake adjustment violations accounted for 45% of all out-of-service conditions. So, 
you're lucky it's only once a year, I guess. So anyways, uh, this guy, I, I had to share this. Um, he says, in response to Dispatching Live last Thursday, so this video has been posted a few hours ago, and employment ran out a few weeks ago. Am I the only one that thinks this, show, this info is slow? Maybe a reflection of the hosts? No wonder auto transport, amongst other logistics sector, sectors, is screwed up so much. So I thanked him. Thank you, Andre. We supposed to believe that recent unemployment benefits are the reason for tightened capacity. Please educate us about the current state of the market. I mean, why not? You know, let's play ball. If you're going to bring up a topic such as current unemployment and it being $600, please do educate yourself on current unemployment and what it is, what's happening on the side of the economy before trying to talk about it. Uh, otherwise, you make yourselves look like a group of uneducated individuals. Wow. This Isn't this just the way? This is how we do it in auto transport. Hey, Andrew, this is about transport, not economic policy. Besides, you sidestep the question. Your show's opening minutes are ignorant. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. Man, it's harder than it looks, I guess. So let's talk about information. Can anyone shed some light? Here's a Facebook comment. I liked this one. On whether or not I would need an apportioned plate, the GVWR of my truck is 14,000 pounds. GVWR is my trailer. 20,000, some of the wording out there is unclear. Some saying if the combined GVWR is 26K, then yes. Yeah, actually there's a lot of confusion about GVWR, which is why... Oh, really? It's going to crash? Okay, hang on one second. I don't know why it does that. You know, Andrew, I also could use a better... Uh, image program so if you've got any great recommendations we did dot compliance 101 if you have a gbwr question there's no way to be an expert on all topics including economic policy so we bring the experts on the show you want to know you want to get clarification on DV, gbwr check out the dot compliance 101 show with your dot guy brian Riker. you can actually go to your dot guy.com give that a shot and we talked about, here's a, this is a screenshot from the show. It does get pretty complicated. GVWR, GCWR, my goodness, CDL, yada, yada. So get the information. Really going to crash again on me. It's so irritating. I reinstalled it already. Saw this on Instagram. Thought it was pretty cool. This is a pretty cool share, right? Got your logo, got your GPS. Wouldn't the shipper like this? And you're halfway. I mean, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. Speaking of, we haven't talked about COVID cases in a while because I don't. I don't really like to. I, I don't know anybody that does like to. Well, maybe you know. I don't. Know. I don't want to speculate. But I will say this: is that we look like we're going down again, just in time for school. Thank goodness. Is that the case? Are you seeing that? What are you seeing? Oh, and then the the hurricane. Now, I guess nothing's happening now, but it could become a hurricane later tomorrow. Be careful. Let me know. Put it in the live chat. Is the hurricane affecting you? Um, Carlos, you mentioned a basement in Williamsburg. Is that what's going on? Let me know. New Orleans braces for evictions, as if a hurricane's not enough. And, you know, I, when I read this, I'm, I'm reminded that um, when we talk repo, repossessions, which they're they're looking at those are going to be going up you know it's that's a hard part of the industry uh here's this is also wildfires in several states shutting down highways arizona california colorado actually we had a, a friend of the show sent this to uh me and ty he shot that out the window that's that's vacaville in fact um there it is right on oh you can't read gish street but yeah man stay safe keep us posted let us know if we can help it's a good time to be a part of the uh, Cars on the Move monthly roundtable. Or talk about, you know, look at this. These uh, privately owned vehicle shippers left. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for your help with our car. 20 bucks for a cold one or whatever. Right on. That is cool. That is very cool. Thank you for sharing that, Mike. Here's another Instagram out here checking out cars for tomorrow's run. Hit us up for your auto needs. Social media. What a great way to stay connected. That's why I go live four times a week. Why not? 
Oh, and there's a podcast now. You can go to uh, go to the autotransportintel.com site and click on podcast, and you can follow and download and share. There's the podcast button. There's autotransportintel.com. Click on the podcast button. Um, and then if you click on the Cars on the Move monthly roundtable, you can sign up. Sign up for the next one. It's Monday, September 14th. And that's going to be great. Oh, wow. It's already time. It's time for some ELD punch. Do you love your ELD? Well, I'll tell you what. Think about that, and we're going to be right back. Um, hey, did you know about the Truckify links on Central Dispatch? Central Dispatch is like doing what? Uh, no, they probably already know. So if you go in the reference ID, now there are hyperlinks. Copy and paste that into your browser. Book it. Negotiate. Get it while it's hot with Truckify. Access is everything. Hi, everybody. This is Bill Zadites inviting you to become a member of CMG Premium. CMG Premium provides you with an upgraded level of knowledge, research, data, analysis, and much more. With VIP content curated from all of our industry verticals, you'll have more access with CMG Premium. Start your 45-day free trial by visiting autoremarketing.com and click on the green tab labeled Members. That's the green tab labeled Members at autoremarketing.com. Have access to more with CMG Premium. Thank you for joining us on Auto Transport Intel on Tuesday Night's Live. It's just before 8.30. We're about halfway through industry news. So you really haven't missed much if you're just joining in now. Although, it's fun to say hello. In fact, uh, Carlos clarified, no, he's just chilling out at his parents in the basement watching ATI. Man, I was all worried. Well, I'm glad, man. I'm glad that you're just chilling out, hanging out, hearing some car hauling music, hanging out with the car hauling family and the community. That's so cool. Thank you guys for tuning in. Here's what I want to do. I want to say this. We were just, uh, I was just talking about, you saw that CMG Premium membership. I want to thank Auto Remarketing for the great content they put out. Um, I highly recommend, go to autoremarketing.com and you can read articles like this. Car dealers paying more for trade-ins. Again, the market, man, the market just doesn't stop roller coastering. So uh, now dealers are paying high dollar to get the supply needed to meet the surge in demand for used cars leading to a more than 16 percent rise in the average value trade-ins are fetching you definitely want to know that prices are at sky high levels on the wholesale side dealers are paying an average of 14 grand on trade-ins during july which was up 16 percent from the 12,000 average trade-in value says edmonds the used car market is experiencing a dramatic recovery. Used vehicles were almost untouched at the start of the pandemic. Then they're practically flying off dealer lots. Great news for car owners because it means they can expect to get a higher value for their vehicle if they sell or trade right now. But time is of the essence. There's no guarantee these unique market conditions will stick around for long. Market conditions, resulting prices can change quickly, says Kelly Blue Book. Back in mid-April, wholesale use prices hit rock bottom, driven mostly by the lockdown of the business. But now we've seen a full recovery at the wholesale level. Auction prices dealers are paying for used cars hit records in June and July. That along with low inventory driving up retail. Why are we talking about all these market conditions? Why don't we just talk about where the cars are? Well, actually, we do. You know what? We do that. On Dispatching Live, we don't get into all this business stuff per se. But you know what? That's how you understand the, the market as it is, right? Oh, here, let's check out the live chat. Uh, ooh, should have sent you the RPM t-shirt. Man, I'd be all into that, Jake. That sounds like a great idea. You know, it's never too late. You know what they say? Uh, what do they say? Never too late. Don't say you're sorry. <laughs> Nobody says that. Meanwhile, what's happening? I'm stuck in live chat because... My image program is still frozen over here, which is ridiculous. Can't even believe it. What else is going on? Maybe we could check something else while we reinstall our photo program. How about that? Thanks, Microsoft. I can't even understand it. I've reinstalled it I don't know how many times. Let's try a different slide. Far from normal value. Let's do this. Oh, so now, okay, great. So it's another live show event. And by the way, speaking of pivoting, 
Did you know that the uh, Zoom went down? Zoom was down Monday morning. Did you guys know that? Like Zoom, Zoom, I don't know how long it was down. Does anybody know how long Zoom was down? I think it might have only been an hour or two, and I think it was early in the morning. But um, I have a feeling that, um, yeah, I mean, I know it, it, it had held up the Cherokee Media virtual event. Um, and so there were, you know, there were other problems, but, um, yeah, I think we're back. Oh, and we're back. Okay, so here we are talking about, uh, volumes also at OEMs. OEM volumes are, are far from normal. Actually, I think these, I mean, these have to be correct, but they see, still seem a little high to me, given all the supply chain issues going on. Uh, and carriers, number of carriers is down, number of, uh, volume... While well, the volume is changing. Now, these are statistics for last year's. Look at this for last year, 2019. 35% of all miles driven are empty, wasted miles. Now, I've, been, I've been saying, man, I was, I was at a conference when I first heard something like that. I'm like, how can that be? How can that be acceptable? And the answer was like, well, that's the way it's always been done, and we got to serve our customer. And I'm thinking, that, that just can't, but you can't. It can't stay that way. It literally just can't. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. I must be ignorant, <laughs> according to what's his face. Okay, so home delivery and long haul. Why would anybody put this on the same screen? Can you believe it? I didn't do that. Home delivery and long haul. An entrepreneur in auto transport did that. Why do I bring that up? Well, tomorrow at Auto Intelligence Summit which is part of Cherokee Media and Auto Remarketing, check this out. You're going to want to do this. You're going to want to tune in tomorrow at noon Central Time, a free session admission to the Automotive Intelligence Summit 2020. Here, you got to get this password, 089605. So go to Automotive Intelligence Summit, enter that password and your name, do this tomorrow morning. How can you beat Carvana at their own game? I'm telling you, this is going to be an awesome session. Now, listen, If again, if you've got a steady job as a driver, you know what? Don't worry about it. Everything's perfect. But if you are working on morphing into the new landscape or building and growing a business, turn in, tune into this. Do that. Uh, you want to tune into this too, maybe. This is global supply chain stuff. Automotive Logistics is another organization in Automotive Logistics. <laughs> uh, supply Chain Live in September is a global virtual conference. I don't talk about global supply chain like they do. They cover the globe and the connections that Automotive Logistics has is unbelievable. Um, that's what it takes to really cover finished vehicle logistics, rail, vessel shipping. Um, so check it out. And there's actually, I think there's a booking link. I believe there's a booking link. If you need more information about that, send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And hopefully we can get Automotive Logistics to talk more about it uh, live on Auto Transport Intel. We'll see. They're in England. They're five hours ahead, so it gets a little late in the night. This is interesting. Number of people paying for an online video service of some kind has soared during the pandemic. Internet companies offer advertisers the one thing they want, growing engaged audiences. Online video ad sales will grow 10% this year. Well, all right. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just having to point it out. Do you see this Tesla fights back against owners hacking their cars? To unlock performance boost. Anybody else feel like you're in the matrix? Anyways, they've got upgradable software locked capabilities in the car. So you pay two, pay two grand to get the acceleration boost. Guess what? It's already in the car. You're just paying two grand so they unlock it. Awida is asking FMCSA to require brokers to automatically provide an electronic copy of each transaction. Within 48 hours after the contractual service has been completed, explicitly prohibit brokers from including any provision that requires a carrier to waive their rights to access the trans transaction records. You want transparency? Everybody does until, until they see what it looks like. Woo. Hey, check this out. 
Mike, in my way out of transport, he got Ernst Young Entrepreneur 2020 Award Finalist. Check that out. Mike, at my way out of transport. I think he was in the live chat last week. Holly, United Road, offering you an exclusive 5% rebate on all the freight you deliver in the month of August. To get your 5% rebate, go to holly.com, use the VTAS app, and get a check, search loads. It's going around on email. On email. Mark's got uh, good news on LinkedIn. Have you seen the Truckify booking links on Central Dispatch? We were just talking about that. Have you seen that? So you go, it's pretty cool. You go to Central Dispatch, right? You're searching for loads. And hopefully, uh, we need to see if we can find some on Dispatching Live on Thursday. Anyways, you're searching for loads. And in the reference ID, there's a Truckify link. And you just highlight it. And then uh, click, you know, open it in a new tab. And you can go right to Dispatch Center and book it. Don't pick up the phone. Don't waste time, hemming and hawing, wondering if anybody's going to answer, being told just text me your company name. You know, all that stuff. Don't do it anymore. You don't need to. What else we got? Oh, did you guys see? I know a lot of you guys did see it. But if you haven't seen the Auto Sled show last Tuesday night, that was a great show. Great show. Auto Sled is auto transport technology. Um, for the goals is focused on connecting dealers with carriers with great software to help the dealers' lives, you know, become more manageable, so that you don't need five inventory managers when really you only need one or two. Actually, it should be one, but you got five because you're always checking the emails, running around the lot. You got your hair on fire. You don't know where your cars are. Well, get auto sled. Put the fire out. Dispatching Live is every Thursday at noon. Please do join Sue and I. And I saw earlier that uh, Candy likes that show. I love that show. I really, I love Dispatching Live. Um, I was a dispatcher um, back in ye old days. And um, I knew this job is so crazy. I got to make a show. And Dispatching Live is that show. So excited about it. So please do tune in, say hello, and we'll search a route for you. And Fridays is all about business networking, connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. That's Ty and I. Ty goes on location. That's a great show, too. Um, actually, last week we had a rail and road service interview. Interesting, talking about where rail meets trucking. And uh, Ty is in charge of the lineup, so... Uh, check in with Ty. Send him an email. Give him a call. Who wants to call Ty? You can call Ty right now. 417-483-2764. And if you call him, he's going to say, but, but I'm, I'm going to be on I'm gonna be on Auto Transport Intel in about 15 minutes. So I got to go. Busy man. <laughs> um, and next week is the Assertus Driver Recruitment Show. That's going to be cool. So check that out. Stay tuned, Auto Transport Intel. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. There isn't another one. Um, not like this. No way. I talk about the whole ecosystem. This is where everybody's welcome. We're not focused on one vertical and kicking everybody else out. No way. OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, brokers, carriers, services, equipment, regulation, and loads. We talk about all of it. That's why there's unending content. This, go, this show's going to go forever, and I'm super excited about it. So here's what I want to do. I want you to stick around, because when we come back, we're going to be live with Larry Veliquette out of Automotive News. You aren't going to want to miss it. Have you checked out the latest updates from Dispatch Center? We have been busy perfecting workflows and adding new features. Keep an eye out for things such as upgraded messaging, advanced notifications, and self-dispatching. Our messaging center now sends emails and text messages to the admin when a message has been received. These notifications help to ensure a message is never missed. Advanced notifications are simply notifications that are sent out if one of the loads on your route has a price increase. Have you ever wished that you could dispatch a load without waiting for the broker to approve your request? This is now possible. Brokers and dealerships can enable self-dispatch on a carrier's account, 
allowing the carrier to complete a dispatch without manual approval from the posting company. This is a great time saver if you already have an established and trusting business relationship. Carriers, ask your favorite brokers and dealerships to mark you as self-dispatch today. Lastly, have you noticed related load suggestions when you use our search feature? These suggested loads are vehicles that fit within the route that you've searched and may be a great fit for any additional open spaces or your backhaul. Dispatch Center is constantly being updated and upgraded. Keep an eye out for emails detailing new features and tips. Well, all right, so check this out. I hear a knock at the door. Um, let's see here. Oh, Larry is joining us now. Let's go to Zoom. Hey, Larry. Can you see me and hear me okay? I can see and hear you. Fantastic. So suddenly we're live, just like that. Just like that, okay. Just like that. All right, so, and let me say, uh, anybody, if you just tuned in, or we have a lot of information here, but right now I've got Larry Veliquette. He's a reporter at Automotive News, and he's live with us on Auto Transport Intel. Larry, please do feel welcome. Say hello to the audience for me. How's everybody doing? Uh, and let's, and we'll go we'll we'll go back and forth to the live chat as we continue to talk. So let's do this. We got a little bit of time with you, and we're going to bring in Ty here in a minute. But okay. um, let's go back to the inception of why why I said okay. So I saw the Daily Drive podcast. By the way. Do me a favor. Tell me a little bit more about what you do at Automotive News. Uh, well, I'm a staff reporter. I'm the, the senior staff reporter. Uh, I've been there about nine years now. I've been a journalist for about 32 years. Uh, I'm a, uh, I cover uh, Toyota and Volkswagen specifically, but I also do the, the uh, inventory story every month. So that my responsibility is to also follow inventory. That is a lot of experience. So that would explain why I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm trembling. No, I'm not. Seriously, I'm nervous to do this show because, dude, you got way more experience than I do on this topic. I, I've been around for a while. That's all. And, and could, is there any way you could, I mean, how would you sum up? Is there any way to sum up that, that length of a career and what you see now and what you've seen before? Is everything cyclical? Are we just... Well, I can, I can give you the news business uh, version of this. When I started, uh, when I started as a reporter, it uh, was not only before the internet, right? Wow, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I can remember when the, I used to work at a newspaper, uh, and I can remember when that newspaper's website would go down for two weeks uh, because the only guy who knew how to update it uh, would go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That gives you some notion of how long I've been doing this. Awesome, yeah. Well, things have changed a lot uh, yeah. fast, but some things haven't, right? Like, uh, I mean, we were talking about this. I, I feel like auto transport in general has seen the most change in the last five years, and up until that, I don't know. I don't think yeah, it's I mean, that much. I I don't think it has either. I mean, uh, I think before, and, and this is a bit out of my wheelhouse, right? Yeah, right. We're out of each other's <laughs> wheelhouses. So we're meeting yeah. in the middle. Yeah, right on. Yeah. So uh, I think the, the process uh, historically was, you know, you, you you pick up the cars at the auction you deli you, that are that have been ordered, or you pick up the cars at the factory or the rail, the right. rail head, and you, and you get them there when they get there. And uh, I think the internet has changed that that dynamic so much as well, it, almost as much as it's changed my industry. Right now, uh, before a dealer would say, uh, you know, a customer would ask a dealer, when this when is this car going to show up? The dealer would have no idea, right? Well, yeah. Now, <laughs> now it, it might be a week, it might be six weeks. It depends. And now, uh, now they can see they can see almost in real time where that vehicle is, when it's going to arrive on their lot. It, it's all amazing. exactly. And you said it almost in that yeah, almost. there's technology there, but it's not, it's not fully locked in. Or yeah. even if it's there, some, I don't know if all customers know it's there. And that's actually where I feel like the education piece is the part that I can really help with because I'm not sure if everybody knows what's out there. In fact, I was watching a virtual event and I heard a guy at an auction talking about how 
yeah, same thing. He doesn't know where the cars are and doesn't know, is there anybody out there that can help me? And I messaged him and I was like, yeah, there's like, there's like a dozen softwares to choose from already. And, and yeah. things are just cooking up. So, um, yeah, there's a lack of information in general which I think the automotive industry is way ahead of the auto transport industry as far as dissemination of information. Yeah, but, it's, it, it just kind of, a, you know, it lags a little bit. It'll take, it takes a while to get, to get down to the transport sector. Uh, I think that, that kind of, the kind of minute tracking technology, but it's coming. And, but having said that, even in automotive, which I think it's really important. Um, yeah, I think auto transport, we're like, you know, we're following, we're like hanging on onto a rope to the automotive industry because we need to follow where it's headed to know where right. we're headed in general. And the automotive industry, I, you just sent me an article reminding me about how in April that all the lots were full. And this was April of 19, yeah. That yeah, was 2019? Was... Okay, but didn't we have a moment just a few months ago where all the lots were full again? The state, they were filling up stadium parking lots. Parking uh, in fields in Florida. That happened. Well, we had a we had a, a bad situation in terms of in terms of industry inventory in the U.S. Uh, we had a bad situation early last year, uh, and it stretched through the summer. It, in April, I did a story. Uh, in April of 2019, I did a story uh, that talked about we had near record inventory levels. We had four point was it four point uh, almost four point two million vehicles. Uh, stuffed on dealer lots and in, in these overflow parking areas, and a lot of which are right right by where I live. Uh, we had cars parked all over the place. And then what happened is uh, from how we got from there to at least the start of COVID, in the meantime, we had the GM strike. And that GM strike, uh, in addition to the other things it did, it acted like a giant relief valve. Right. Uh, so it it drained off because they had two months of lost production. Right. It drained off a lot of the excess inventory. When 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 about was that? Uh, that was last October. OK. Uh, so we, September, October area. So we, we had about two months there where where GM really, really uh, they had a lot of inventory going in. They came out of it. They didn't have much. So. They started to build back up. We go through the holidays. Uh, they're starting to build back up. You know, winter's winter. The retail sales were a little stronger than what they thought they were going to be. And then we get to March, and COVID hits. Right, and suddenly every plant in the United States, every assembly plant in the United States, is shut down uh, for at least six weeks. Um, and what we came out of that with is an inventory level that is the lowest that it's been in uh, since 2011 right after right after the crash when you know when Detroit shut down uh, and we're right now we have dealers nationwide uh, who just cannot get cars I was reading but, they're, they're parking them sideways in the lots <laughs> yeah you're talking about a, a, a guy out in uh, Aurora Colorado He's a, got a GMC uh, Buick store out there. He's supposed to have two to three, 250 to 300 vehicles on his lot right now. And I think he had, what, 40? 40 or 45 or 50 left. Uh, it was crazy. He said, and he said, I can't, I can't get them. I'm, and what was going on when he would get a truck? He had customers waiting. He, right. when, a, when a delivery truck, he would customers were buying the vehicles off the truck. It's kind of like it was almost like the water on the pallets at the warehouses, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Clamoring for the water and trucks. It was like it was like his toilet paper, right? Toilet paper, <laughs> right? I'm thinking water. It was toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, Costco's got toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> trucks. <laughs> yeah, GMC, the GMC guys got trucks coming in. We're going. We're going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this, so this is going on nationwide, right? And uh, some of the some of the brands are in a little better shape than others, uh, and, and a lot of it depends on the segment a lot, uh, and specific vehicles. Now, like Ford, for example, Ford's in pretty good shape. Uh, they're down, but they're not uh, they're not as bad as 
General Motors is uh, in terms of, of trying to get inventory to its dealers. Right, and it's you, really right, yeah. that one of your specialties is, I mean, you know these OEMs probably, I mean, you it's, it's your business to know these statistics and how they're doing and right what's going on with different models and that's kind of fascinating yeah and it in terms of in terms of inventory it's it's funny right now uh you know you're not you're not really aimed at consumers but right now is the absolute worst time to buy a car <laughs> really? if, if you were a consumer yeah there is oh. if you were a consumer there's no reason no economic reason you would be at a dealership right now. And I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this. But that's actually what I've been thinking, but I, because I don't understand how I don't, I don't understand how the demand is so high that everybody's lots are depleted. I mean, I know the OEMs production levels down. And by the way, on OEM production levels, is it really already at sixty to eighty percent again? That seems yeah. really high. Yeah, your terms of, in terms of the ramp up. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's it's really because it's an emergency situation, right? It now there's still a lot of hiccups. There has uh, to be. I mean, there's no way the supply chain, right? Because you read about supply chains and it is a disaster. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, no, no, that's not their problem. It's just. It's a function of right. You've got you've got uh, suppliers with a liquidity problem. Not to mention absenteeism. You gave some of the factors. It just it it really surprises me that OEMs are at eighty percent production. Yeah, and, but it's it's That's tough, real. and they're 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 juggling, you know, hundreds of balls in the air right now. There's there's about fourteen thousand on average, about fourteen thousand individual parts on a on a on a regular vehicle okay Fourteen thousand, right, 000, right. <clears throat> yeah you know, and, and and not not complete you get sub assemblies so that kind of cuts it right down, right, right? But, uh individual parts you've got about fourteen thousand parts okay those those get passed from tier threes to tier twos to tier ones to oems uh and any breakdown right any breakdown in any part of that causes immediate pain up the line because of because of just in time uh, production. Do you think so, there will be, uh, you know, uh, 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 an increase in recalls given the potential? I mean, well, I still I don't, don't get it. I, I I don't know if I'm dense, but I don't understand how we're at eighty percent production capacity again, given fourteen thousand parts and what's going on in the world. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Uh, they're, these guys are working crazy hours, right? Yeah, yeah. Every every yeah. factory in in Toyota, for example, in Toyota Land that I that I cover, they have fifteen manufacturing plants in North America. Every uh, well, fourteen that are operating, they got one under construction in, in Huntsville. Uh, but every one of those fourteen is working overtime right now. Okay. Just just to you know they're okay. they're doing everything they can to get as many vehicles out the door as they possibly can. Um, and, you know, you, you want to add to how complex this is, right? Yeah. Add add the fact that uh, that we've got parts and sub-assemblies and engines coming in from Mexico. Oh, yeah. That's the, the thing is, you add the geographical problems, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, which is – and the Canadian border uh, up, up by me, you know, that's that's closed to most traffic. The, the auto parts are still flowing, but the, but it's close to most traffic. I'm guessing that those high end uh, flight charter overnight part delivery companies they must be going crazy right now. They are, they absolutely are. My, so, my brother actually runs a, a tier a tier three uh, uh, auto plant. Oh wow! He's, he's a general manager at a tier three auto supplier. Wow! He does e coding for for parts uh-huh. uh, here in and where I live and probably 70% of the, of the vehicles on the road today have parts that go through his plant, right? means millions and millions of parts that move through there every month. Uh, and he's, he's like pulling his hair out. You know, he's trying to get these parts to keep these factories running. So then to, to, to achieve that 80%, then the cost of goods sold, 
right? I mean, there mm-hmm. that that's got to be really high. Yeah, you're seeing. You know, look at um, that overtime just, uh, and everything yeah. else. Yeah, it's it's now the overtime. The overtime is a. Um, I mean, the labor. It's is yeah, really labor is not that. It, right. You would think it would be a a bigger piece of the uh, a bigger chunk of the price of a vehicle. It's not really. It's it's uh, it's actually pretty minuscule relative to other components on there. Well, yeah, uh, I just would think that the the delivery of that that one part that we can't get and we're paying, you know, trillion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, overnighting overnighting cases of parts to keep an assembly plant running happens all the time. And it, wow. you know, it's, it, it, the more complex a uh, an OEM supply chain is, uh, the the harder it is to manage. Look at do you remember when the tsunami hit off of Japan in 2011? Yes. So, uh, Fukushima. Yeah, right. Fukushima happened, but in Thailand, uh, automakers discovered that uh, there was a single plant that supplied almost every uh, every different every automaker with a pigment used in a specific paint. Oh wow! And this one this one small plant, I, I can't remember if it was a if it was a Robert W. Bosch plant. I don't remember. Now it's been a while, uh, but all these different automakers, right? Outside, of, you know, Toyota, Toyota, Nissan, uh, that were affected directly by the quake. They had their own problems. Everybody had this problem with paint because wow. of the because of the the way the uh, uh, supply chain is structured. Wow. Um, and Nick says a lot of air freight is going with regular passenger flight companies because they have the room now. So yeah. there you are. You're flying next to a transmission. <laughs> well, at least above it, right? Which you're, you're riding. <laughs> you're riding above the transmission anyway. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Um, I had made some notes, and we'll we'll bring um, we'll bring Ty in here shortly. Um, we haven't really talked much about auctions. Okay. And, and I know Ty's going to want to be a part of that. Uh, dealer profits. So dealer profits are, are strong. Yeah, right now, like we said, it's the it's probably the worst time to go buy a car because dealers right now, even though they don't have very many cars on their lot, uh, they are commanding. Uh, they're able to command pricing that they haven't been able to command in years. Uh, so their per unit vehicle uh, profits on new vehicles are through the roof. Like exponentially and there's a waiting than, list often oh yeah 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 and it, it's not just uh it's not just the uh the fact that they can you know get a little more from the consumer right when it when an automaker ships a car to a dealer when a dealer orders a car from an automaker uh that dealer starts playing what's called floor plan costs right right on their on their inventory and the, the automaker, because it takes a while to get the car to the dealer, the automaker gives them about 90 days of floor plan or of credit right. uh, against, against that floor planning cost right. uh, to, you know, to, to get the car there so that they can market it and get it and get it moving. Right. And this is this is above holdbacks and the other kind of uh, incentives, stair step incentives that dealers have to deal with from their automakers. But these. Uh, I pulled up a story to give you some numbers, right? On a uh, for a fifty thousand dollar truck, every point of floor plan interest that a dealer that a dealer pays per month is about forty two bucks, right? So okay. most dealers most dealers have, are paying about five percent, uh, three to five percent floor plan interest. So one hundred twenty to two hundred dollars a month on uh on interest charges that that just keep ticking the longer a vehicle sets right right but the oem gives them money up front for the first 90 days and if that vehicle sells right off the truck they pocket that so that's added profit for the dealer right there nice yeah yeah it's a it's that's a little back door any is the, okay, so any insight, prediction, or otherwise into how long 
this is going to go on? Oh, boy. Well, I tell you, uh, if you can tell me how long COVID is going to go on, right? I'll tell you how long. <laughs> how so long it's this is directly go on. related to COVID. I mean, sure. because the OEMs, well, the OEMs, okay, so let's look at it this way. Since we don't know when COVID, and if we do, I don't know, I'm going to skip it. We're just going to assume COVID is here forever. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, let's not do that. So, uh, yeah. I'd but, be against that, by the way. But right, exactly. <laughs> We're all against it. But let's assume let's assume it sticks around for another couple of years. Let's go worst case. All right. So the plants, when when do they expect to get back to 100 percent capacity? I've heard like I mean a couple of years. Uh, like so right you could because you could graph this if you're if you're at let's okay let's say they're 80 percent capacity but given the inventory levels we have right now how long will it take? to get back up to the inventory levels that dealers are used to or need and the production levels that OEMs need to be at to meet that dealer level. So that's that's the magic number, right? We don't know. So what's what's going on and uh, here's the other here's the other contributing factor, right? Most of the cars are uh, that are sold in North America are made in North America, but there are a number that aren't. So, uh, for example, European vehicles that uh, was coming in from Germany, et cetera, uh, where COVID has died down, where it's uh, been managed better, those vehicles uh, are, are starting to flow, right? And the same with Japan. So J uh, Japan and Korea, where COVID has died down, those vehicles are coming in. I was going to say, so right. So what I was talking about, I had isolated it to... United States or North America. Yeah. And but the, what you're doing is, yeah, as you expand the picture. Yeah. It, it gets but in the, in the U.S., because COVID is still raging, especially in the South where all those auto plants are, uh, Cox has, has started actually, uh, Cox Automotive, which is a, you know, a massive, giant, uh, you know, giant uh, data sucking machine uh, that knows everything about this industry at any given point. Uh, Cox has actually begun tracing community outbreaks of COVID. To, to right, uh, Jonathan exactly. Smoke. If you if, yeah. right, you watch Jonathan Smoke. You follow. Yeah, yeah. sure. He talks about that. Yeah, you. If they start tracing community outbreaks, uh, you know what? Where where you'll have a, an outbreak in a community in uh, you know outside Huntsville, let's say, uh, and they'll they'll be able to trace. Okay, well, within two weeks that plant is going to have absentee problems, right? right? Because because it's not only the workers getting it, right? It's the workers who have to stay home because the, because their school is shut down. Right. Well, and it's in the production world, like when you're talking, uh, you made me think of the meat plants, right? When right. you go through those meat plant hiccups, which I don't know the state of meat plants right now. Yeah, it, Outside my wheelhouse, sorry. <laughs> I don't know the state of meat plants right now, but but right. My work for meat news. I'll I'll call you. Right, exactly. <laughs> meat news, love it. Um, so that'll get interesting when you add right global OEM production levels exceeding domestic. What will happen to the marketplace and vehicles and incentives and pricing? Um, and, but so let's go the other direction. Michael Culler says it'll disappear after the elections. What do you think would happen? Let's say COVID disappears on November fourth or sixth. So we 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 gonna bring back those hundred and sixty thousand people or one hundred and seventy thousand people that died, or what are we gonna do? Right. No. Well. <laughs> it, no. Right. <laughs> no. You're thinking of zombie news. Are they in a cave somewhere? Right. <laughs> well, and, and you know what? And we're going to actually, I'm going to bring in, and let's do this. Let's bring in Ty, because I know that, uh, and we, we, we don't want to get too far off track. I, like, we don't want to veer into politics. But okay. it would be a different picture if COVID ended. Sure. Right? If we get a vaccine, right? Right. Then every we get a, a, deal a workable vaccine. Product OEMs can go back to 100% sooner, right? Yeah. And do you think yeah. that the demand levels will decrease? Do you think they're at extreme? Are they extremely high? So right now, uh, what we're seeing demand-wise is you've got uh, you've got some pull pull forward of the market, 
right? Some people who who took the deals that were you know fabulous deals. Yeah. Uh, uh, say in May, you had some pull ahead uh, because the because the dealers wanted to get back in business, and so they were you know and they had lots they they were worried uh, they were really worried in April about what they were going to do with their cars because in April it sucked. Absolutely sucked to be a dealer in April. Right. Uh, in May, the, the you know demand started to pick back up, and the incentives they that were even, on yeah they weren't even essential businesses. No, no, you had you had uh, hundreds and hundreds of dealers, thousands of dealers, in different parts of the United States that were just closed, couldn't operate, couldn't sell a car, uh, and then you went and then you went to a point where they were where they were able to sell a car. So you pulled ahead a little bit of that demand uh, uh, overall. Hi, Ty. <laughs> What's up, Ty? Hey, hey. Uh, but you're also seeing the, the demand segmented, right? The people that have money uh, are buying cars because the deals are good. So they're buying very the very expensive cars, the fifty thousand dollar trucks, the seventy thousand dollar trucks, the seventy thousand dollar SUVs. Those are those are selling well. And dealers are getting great profits on it. What's not selling are the twenty thousand uh, dollar subcompact sedans and the twenty thousand dollar subcompact uh, crossovers. Really? So the people, yeah, the people that don't have uh, don't have disposable income or are worried about their employment situation right now, they're not buying. Okay. Well, and ultimately, I, that that moves up. And I'm glad to hear that in just that. I was I was surprised to hear demand is up and you know there's a large part of the economy that's you know we're having problems and what what I didn't want to speculate was that people then getting their unemployment or their stimulus checks are going out and buying cars and that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, well, I mean there was some of that, right? Because there, there was no there was no uh, everybody got the almost everybody got the $1200. Right, and you right. have you, you have. Doesn't mean I'm going to go buy a car. It does not mean you're going to go buy a car. <laughs> there, there are very damn few twelve hundred dollar cars out there. Uh, but it does mean that, it, it, especially if somebody had a lease, uh, where that that would have expired in that in that period, and they were looking for something, or you had people who were in cities, uh, who were who suddenly got very nervous about taking public transit every day. Uh, and well, being being around other people, right? Those folks, those folks bought cars, uh, you know, some for the first time. Well, and that's and, and it's, I saw a lot of stories like that coming out of the UK. But you've also got people uh, driving less. There's, there's so many parameters. Oh yeah, it's almost hard to fully understand what's going on and then predict. Um, hey Ty, what's going on, buddy? A lot. I'm pretty excited because. <clears throat> Believe it or not, Larry, um, I've actually been following you for a long time. <laughs> I've never Jay noticed you like me. <laughs> Jay probably doesn't know how big a deal this is, but this is big. I mean, for the guys out there listening, a guy like Larry is uh, its a big deal. I didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. Thanks. We didn't talk about that. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. Well, well, when Larry was talking about the tsunami, I read that story. It was a paint color, right? And I yeah. remember, I was like, wow, what else can go? That was right after Cash for Clunkers, remember? Mm -hmm. And then everybody's trying, in the States, we're trying to crank things back up. Oh, we're missing one little thing from... <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. That's just, that's huge. It's a really big deal. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Read yourself. I remember auto mag, auto, auto, automotive news magazines. I would it be at a dealership waiting on a car, grab the actual magazine, just like, <laughs> you know, and actually that, that's right. In fact, I, there was a time I don't do it anymore. I, where I was, when I would open, open the shot, I'd be holding a magazine. And one of the magazines that I've read the most at, when you're at a trade show, automotive news, I mean, there's copies of it everywhere. Because there's so much news in it, it's one of the driving forces in the industry. So it is. It's pretty cool. You yeah, are. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, well, it's really cool to to meet you. But it's really cool to have you on. And so everybody's like, Ty, why are you so excited? It's just a guy who writes 
you know, articles. No, 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 no. Do you know who this guy's talking to? I mean, do you really understand who Larry gets to talk to to get his information? That's I, I like I like to think I have I have nice contacts. Incredible. <laughs> I'm sitting over here just like, oh, let's talk. <laughs> I mean, we got to meet Scott Marble. Marble. How do you say his last name? Scott W. Uh, he was the Volkswagen guy. Jay, we met up in, I think, Baltimore. Uh, Remember Scott? Scott Keogh? From which company? Volkswagen. Oh, Scott Mabry. Mabry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We just met him at the, uh, he was in charge of the railroad, wasn't he? Didn't he give a speech on it? I think, yeah, he did give a speech, and I think you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. Well, and, cool. and I was actually saying that to get OEM guys on the show is, it is really hard. Really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hope, so Larry, guess there. what? Larry, there. we need a favor. <laughs> right, exactly. We're going to call in a favor. <laughs> so, Ty, what what would you... Let's Okay, so, right, the thing is we're on camera and we're doing a live show, so we have that. But aside from that, because we do meetings all the time, what's something you would like to ask Larry about, whether oh. it's about dealers, OEMs, auctions, inventory, transport, well, we got to let Larry know I'm a used car guy. So okay. that's, that's my lane. I'm the used car guy. You know, the OEMs never been my thing. Too many red tape rules and other problems. That, well, don't feel bad. I'm a used car guy, a used car guy at heart. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's where, you know, I go by, I always go back to 2018 stats. I haven't found 19, but what was it? 40 million cars, used cars sold in the United States in 2018. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's crazy. So I always tell the guys when I, I do this coaching consulting, I'm like, look, if you want to live with the masses or the classes, sell to the masses, right? I mean, there's your volume and that's 40 million that we know sold. How many of those 40 million did I move four times? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you I'm, know, every, every, I, I will tell you this, every dealer in the United States for the last 10 years has lived and died by used cars. Yeah. It's been their moneymaker because they haven't been able, up, up until this recent uh, situation, they have not been able to make money selling new cars. There was a there was a point I before I covered Toyota and Volkswagen, I covered FCA uh, for eleven years, and uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Dodge Dart. Yeah. Yeah. So they 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 built the Dodge Dart in Illinois in Belvedere, uh, and they did it uh, they. They did it because as part of the deal to get to for Fiat to get Chrysler stock from the UAW after the bankruptcy, they had to build a high mile, a 40 mile per gallon car in the U.S., right? Now, the problem with that was it was a nice enough car. The problem with that strategy was that the margin on that car was so thin and I, I, I will tell you how, how thin it was. $11. Well, I believe <laughs> a, de a dealer on the, just on MSRP, right? It was $11 of difference between the invoice price and the MSRP on a, on a Dodge Dart, on certain, on certain models of a Dodge Dart. Now, now a dealer could make other money, right? Because there's holdback and there's uh, the, the other stuff that we talked about, the, uh, the juice on, you know, depending on how fast you turned it. But 11 bucks, that's what they had to work with. So if they paid the, the new car salesman 100 bucks, you know, they only lost 89. Yeah. <laughs> if they got if they got full markup on it. Yeah. Well, no, I, I love what you're talking that's about. Like, so, <clears throat> I'm kind of the used car guy. So I like to talk used cars. And that's, you know, you said you're a used car guy at heart. And that's where... So I look at it and I say, okay, there's obviously, it seems to be from stuff I'm reading your stuff and keeping up and talking to dealers, man, mm -hmm. I can't find used cars anywhere. And when I do, I got to pay through the nose. Then I start talking to other people trying to speculate or I'm conspiracy theory. Well, how are, how are certain big name people getting their used car inventory? I'm like, well, it's pretty easy. You make friends with the bank. And yeah. You get the report on who's getting ready to get their car repoed. You call them before the repo man comes and you just got a great deal. I don't know how they're doing it. Facebook marketplace, whatever. But I mean, there are ways to get used cars and dealers are starting to get pretty creative from what I'm seeing. 
Yeah, they really are. And they're, they're starting to actually go to, go to consumers, uh, especially right now. They're doing anything they can to get, uh, especially something that they can CPO, right? Yeah. If they can put through a CPO program and, you know, cost oh. them $500. Yeah, and well, for, wait, wait, for, sorry to interrupt you. For our audience, we, we're, we don't know what CPO is. I do. But sorry. We, certified pre-owned. Pardon me. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> just put it in there, start guys. whipping jargon. I apologize. Oh, you're good. <laughs> no, it's good. I, you're dealing with truck drivers, so we're, we're trying to it, it teach, it's educate fair truck enough. drivers. <laughs> there are terms of art in every industry. That's so true. We just try to be clear. That's true. And, Jay told me what is the difference between a stinger and a wedge. So I didn't there know. There you that. go. Hey, <laughs> exactly. Nice. Good call, man. Exactly. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. CPO. So, so any vehicle right now that they can get their hands on, uh, you know, they're they're, they're uh, Let me tell. You, I I give you the best the best way for me to measure how how desperate dealers are for used cars right now. Uh, I have uh, unfortunately uh, a. Fiat 500L, right? One of the most unloved vehicles out there. Uh, and, you know, with good reason. I, my, my wife loved it. Uh, I had to put a, a new transmission in it, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> anyway, this is how desperate they are. I had dealers call me, hey, do you want to sell your Fiat 500L? <laughs> that's, you know, it's desperate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, when they're, when they're trolling for the, when they're trolling for Fiats, boy, they're. Yeah. Well, no I'm always, I'm just always impressed with your, the work you put into your articles, the, the numbers, the stats. I know you got to talk to a ton of people for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, it's, uh, it, it's surprising. It was surprising for me when I started at Automotive News. Uh, I, I had read it forever, right? Because uh, I covered the auto industry, but I didn't know the cachet that it had until I joined the staff. Yeah. It's it's the different doors that it opens. And to churn out that level of writing. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're just running we're just letting a camera roll and talk. <laughs> but when you go to churn out an article oh. at that of that caliber, yeah, that's something else. Well, and they, and it makes sense. That's what's amazing. I mean, I like to read, don't get me wrong. I read books and read other stuff, but you know, you can read an article that means nothing and you don't understand it, but you just like you were talking about floor plan, right? The mm -hmm. $42. See, that's something I always talk about. Car do you, so if you want to be a car hauler, you need to understand something. The dealer wants their car for a reason. What are the reasons? Well, it could be sold or it could be they're paying interest on it. So I always say it's $25 average per day on a used car. You're throwing out 42. I mean, wow. Well, that's 42 per point of, of floor plan interest, right? So if he's paying 3% uh, floor plan interest, on a fifty thousand dollar car, it's one hundred and twenty bucks a day, or one hundred twenty. Yeah. Hundred, pardon me, one hundred twenty bucks a month. A month. Well, right. yeah. that's crazy. It's still crazy, and that's well, what when you I try to educate car lot. guys, car hauler guys. Yeah. I'm like, look, <clears throat> yeah, when you when the dealer calls and he sounds like he's upset because his car is not there when you told him it would be, there's reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. these guys, you know, there are. There are dealers that are very, very successful. Don't <laughs> let. Oh yeah. You know, I won't. I won't try to hide it. When when you go to NADA, uh, and you see, uh, you know, you you see dealers out there talking about the struggle, and then you go on the show floor and you see uh, private airplanes for sale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, there's a reason there are G5s on the floor. <laughs> Yeah. on the floor of the, of the NADA uh, uh, convention. Well, yeah, absolutely. But that, I mean, okay, so that's fair, right? I always ask yeah. guys, go ask a new car dealer what his electric bill is every month. And then call oh, me yeah. back. Just, I mean, the things that car haulers don't think about, that dealers don't think about us. And that's where Jay's done an excellent job, in my opinion, trying to bring, like having a guy like you on here, I mean, that is bringing together a group of people that don't hang out. <laughs> but it's yeah, incredible I mean, because we do this. We, we're following you. We're reading your stuff that you're putting out. We talk about cocks all the time and car all the time and auctions closing their doors and what's going to happen next. And, mm -hmm. But to have a guy like you come on that's completely separate and look at how we're all talking together. Isn't that beautiful? And, 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 all had beads on, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Well, and well, like something we haven't mentioned yet. Okay, not to mention all these factors, but then transport fees are up. Well, and they, and they probably should be, right? That's what I've been saying. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I keep saying it. 
Um, I, I'd love to read. I'd love to read somewhere on Facebook. Oh my gosh, Auto Transport Intel really does fight for carriers, even though he's <laughs> not a carrier. I'm not a carrier, but I, I believe that transporters should make more money. And so what I what I've said recently is I realize that you know dealers and auctions don't like paying more right now. Well, carriers haven't liked making less for the last. How long has it been? Yeah. Well, yeah. Larry, uh, Larry, so let's segue, if you don't care. <clears throat> this is a great segue. How are we doing on time, Jay? All right, we're doing good. Uh, we're going to run a video in about five, seven minutes. Okay. So segue is, is okay, we, used cars are hard to get. Auctions, I just always try not to say their names, but I think it's okay. Say Mannheim and Odessa. Sure. Decide, let's close the doors. Let's just sell them online. To me, that doesn't seem to make things easier for the dealer trying to get inventory. What do you think? No, it's going to make it more difficult because those they're not going to be in a central yard, right? They sell them if they sell them online, they're not going to bring them all together. So a dealer is going to end up, you know, he you sell them online, you might end up, you know, buying a car in Florida, uh, or <laughs> plus uh, dealers are going to be. They're going to be really reticent to do 100% online sales without some guarantees. Uh, there are a reason that that buyers at auctions are there, you know, are hired by dealers because they're there to know exactly what the hell they're buying. Okay, okay, okay. This is part of my little program speech. This is good. Okay, guys, he just <laughs> used the word buyer. Okay, so Ty always talks about how do dealers get their cars? Well, they either go to an auction or they buy online, or my favorite, they send a buyer. Mm -hmm. now, okay, now keep going. So the buyer is hired by the dealer to go physically to the auction, to look yep. at the car, drive the car, and buy the car at the right price. And people are like, how much do you get paid for that? 200 bucks a car. I want that job. No, you don't. No, that, no, that job sucks. It's stressful as <laughs> hell. No, right? you don't want that job. <laughs> about, 30 cars, about 30 cars in four hours. Yeah, two hundred. Man, I want that job. No, you don't. No, no, because that guy, that guy who who makes those instant decisions, and that's what they are. They are. Uh, that guy who makes that instant decision is working on a very thin wire, right? Yeah. Because if he doesn't see uh, a, a major mechanical issue, or he doesn't see a giant scratch, or he doesn't, he misses something that's uh, that's there. Uh, there's a reason that that car was at, is probably a reason that that car was at the auction. Yeah, he was on a red light. He thought it was green. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. As is. And That's why you hear so much talk about CRs. Yeah, and yeah, it's amazing. So I want to hear more, Larry. What do you? What's your take? Because I really didn't anticipate you saying you would be anti close the doors. I'm really excited to hear that, though. Um, well, I think in terms of closing up the auctions. Well, I think right now we're we're at uh, we're in a uh, they're in a pretty desperate state, um, and they've got competition coming from. Uh, there's a dealer uh, that dealers are starting, especially large dealer groups, are just starting to do it all in house, right? Hold their own auction. Why am I paying Mannheim or Odessa uh, to move this when, especially when I've got other dealers or other dealerships in my group? Uh, where I can move, you know, I can start uh, selling these but cars. So if we're going to just look at them on screens, why do I show up to look at your screens? Yeah, yeah. And you, you uh, really can't get, you can't get the level of detail on a screen that you can in person. Right. And you're talking what we talk about. We had ACV on the show, Joe, founder. And then uh, we haven't had Backlot Cars on, but <clears throat> that's what that's what Larry's talking about, guys. He's talking about ACV, Backlot Cars. And what those are is, so the dealer typically, traditionally, calls Ty and says, Ty, I have nine trade-ins. I need you to take them to the auction. And I always say, yes, sir. Are you going to go buy cars? He says, yeah. So I make sure I take the cars up, drop right. them off, get them in the sales, wait for the sale to be over, and guess what he gives me? Nine more cars going right back. So Ty loves that, right? Yeah. And Ty's loaded both ways. That's cool, too. But guess what? Now everybody wants to do backlot cars and ACV. 
because the transport guy sucks. Or now the auction's not open. Well, right. and, or they think the transport guy sucks because they only bought two or there's only two left over. And you're going to have to hire either a smaller trailer or wait till that nine car gets loaded. But either way, you're waiting longer than you thought you had to. It costs more than you thought it should. And there's just, there's a lot of consternation going on. But I mean, these are just market factors. I call it the shotgun approach. I've had dealers over the years, new car, used car. They do this, I call shotgun approach, which is I get online and I buy cars wherever they're cheap. And then they call up the transport guy and say, I bought all these cars all over the place. <laughs> 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 Even <Need them> back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there goes that guy's profits. Yeah. And I'm every, like, okay, every dime so, that he saved, uh, yeah, is, is going to So here's a good one for you, Larry. Here's a great one. Okay. These guys that say, hey, I got to buy cars five states away. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know that. I wish I could answer that. It doesn't make yeah, any sense. I could, I could see like, okay, they don't have two-wheel drive F-150s in Missouri. I need two-wheel drive F-150s in Missouri. Why? I don't know. But I can't find them in Missouri. Oh, okay. Well, you need to go to Florida or go somewhere else. They're, they, all of them are down there. Well, are they cheaper? No, but I no. need them. Yeah. You get them transported cheaper? No, but I need them. So that's the only rational, logical conclusion I can come up with for the shotgun approach. <laughs> yeah, if if they're hunting for something specific. Yeah. Yeah, I I uh, I can't explain it. I mean, I know dealers all over the world that do, or all over the United States that do this, right? They're shopping the this the auction in Detroit because they think, oh, you know, it's there's a lot of cars there. They'll go cheap. They go fast. Yeah, I'll get, I'll catch a deal there, uh, or they're they're going down to Baltimore or they're or wherever right i i don't understand i don't understand the motivation i really don't yeah well and that's unless you I, can load up unless you can load up right and, and well exactly so put a truck so, going up and put a truck going back right well this conversation that you and i are having goes back to at least 2019 so things change so now we can't find cars at all so i'm thinking well shotgun approach may be reasonable at this point if you can't find cars but Honestly, if you're a dealer and you're all about selling cars, I've always said for years, look, dude, pick about three auctions about 200 miles away because it, it's really weird if you break the map out and you start looking, there's a Mannheim and Odessa almost every 200 miles, right? Sure. I wonder if I'm that perfect. was strategy, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was an accident. Yeah. So there's a reason find... that Burger King always builds next to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said for years, I'm like, well, why don't you guys just go – you know, pick two or three that are close, get a relationship with a carrier, transport guy that can go do that. And you don't have all this trouble. Like, no, I like to buy them all over. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm car managers, to that's how they make their nut, right? That's how they shine. Yeah. And that, it's, it's, and as you're talking about that, that's why it gets into as a carrier to build relationships, whether it's from those buyers or other carriers or even brokers, because you can't, the, the chances are very good that you can't by yourself uh, manage that route, whatever random route comes up. And so everybody's a sub hauler of somebody else or, or you know, relies on being in a relationship. And as a, as a, at being at the top and having all those vehicles, thinking that you can go through 1,000 different carriers, you don't want to do that. You might have five main branches you go through and they have all those sub haulers and all those things. So relationships, again, no matter how it's done, digitally, I don't want to talk to anybody, all robots, you still, even if it's all technology, you still need relationships. I hear you, guys answer, you guys answer a question for me because I'm, I'm curious now. Do uh, the large used car groups, the CarMax, AutoNation, do they have their own transport wings? They do. Yes, but... but... If they have so much volume, they still have to count on the other guys. Exactly. They still count okay. So they're count. still sub-hauling too. Yeah. Okay. Just like everybody what, else. I think what they're all getting ready to do, you know, CarMax obviously has their own auction, which we haven't talked about, but, right. you know, where I'm going with this, and I've said this, I'd be curious to know your thoughts, but I've said since... Since it kind of basically became official when I read that first article, I think it was uh, 
uh, Schwartz. What's his name? Schwartz. Uh, Sandy Schwartz. Sandy, yeah. Oh, Sandy, yeah. He's yeah, gone now, this, by the way. He says, uh, what did you say? He's gone now, by the way. He, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he left. just stepped down, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is weird, okay? And it I, is weird. I like Sandy. Sandy's a great guy. Well, I do too. But I'm sitting here thinking, why did he say, in quotes, I hope the doors don't open again? It was no. Let me rephrase that. That wasn't the exact quote, but it was along the line. I don't. They're not opening. Yeah. Now look forward. And he actually, I think he said it was something he had been looking forward to for a while, and and this pretty much gave the opportunity to to seal the deal and do it because they were already had digital initiatives and other problems with the physical auctions, so. Right. Look at, yeah, look at, uh, cast your mind forward about 15 years, right? All your, all the kids right now, my kids are both college age, that, that buy sight and scene off, off of, uh, Amazon. They don't try stuff out, right? How many people, I, I bought cars by text message. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buy a car on TikTok. Uh, buy, exa exactly, right? This is where we're going. You're you are going to see 15 years from now, I think. Uh, dealers are not going to have inventory. What they're going to have are websites, and then you're going to and then I'm going to pick out a car that I want, and Carvana or you know, this is the Carvana deal writ writ whole, right? I'm going to pick out a car that I want from this guy who's got the right to sell it, and it's going to get delivered to me from wherever. So you're, you're talking to individual, you know, onesies and twosies that are going to, that are going to happen overall. And you're not going to have to, you're not going to have a physical auction. I don't think. Well, where I'm going is I'm going the independent auctions, the friendlies, I call them friendlies. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if they're smart, this is just my opinion, they should and just go out and blow it up. And everybody, because, okay, okay, I, I hate to admit it, but <clears throat> one of my biggest accounts ever was buy here, pay here, right? <clears throat> two million a year, <laughs> two million a year for my little truck company was my yeah. biggest account, right? Okay. Picking them up from the auction, taking them to the recon center, drop right. them up, pick up another nine, take them to the store, you know, one state away, not that far. Mm -hmm. While I'm there, pick up the repos that they got in the back, bring them back to the recon. It just keeps going. So yeah. I look at that market and I look at our nation, right? Our economy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we getting rid of the middle class? I don't know. It sure feels like we're trying, but okay. If we do, sure, if we don't, yeah, sure does. you still have these low end cars. And I think you're going to have a lot of mass in that, right? Because I talk to my junk, I call them junk guys, low end, five, ten thousand dollar cars are cheaper. Yep. You know what? They haven't missed a beat at all. Mm -mm. Those so, cars are hot right now. Yeah. So I'm saying if I'm an independent dealer and I, I know these guys, they they're not maskers. They they'll come up and hug you a kiss you, right? Mm -hmm. and all they want to do they're is maskers. come and do the auction hang out, high five everybody, get their hugs and kisses, shake as many hands as they can, lick doorknobs and get their cars and get out, right? To the table yeah. or the casino, one of the two, as fast as they can. But the point being, there's a, that's a lot of cars, right? So oh, yeah. those cars, you don't just buy online if you're a real dealer. <laughs> no, no. You know, it's it's funny, This in this we are now in seeing the, the end of a trend that started in the late 90s, right? The, the move to, to really improve automotive quality. Yeah. So now, you know, my son drives a 20-year-old Jeep. Yeah. And I feel absolutely safe in him driving a 20-year-old Jeep. Yeah. And it, and it, it works fabulously, right? And it's got over, it's got 110,000 miles on it or something like that. But it's, it's an absolutely perfect vehicle that's and that's in 2000 quality has improved exponentially since then yeah the average age of a, of a vehicle on the road now is i think just under 12 years i mean barely under 12 years on the road that's the average that's going to get extended yeah 
You know, they, there's just no car. The scrappage rate is, is going down because there's just no reason to get rid of these cars now. Well, yeah, look at the odometer. I mean, geez, it's crazy. I mean, then you got to hand it to the manufacturers. Honestly, they they really have stepped up the game. When you start hauling cars around and you've got, you're looking at odometers and you're seeing 200 all the time, I mean, whether you like an OEM or you don't, that's pretty impressive, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and that's nothing, though. 200,000 miles is not, oh, yeah. it's not that big a deal. <laughs> That's all my look, cars. Yeah, yeah, you look like you're about my age, Ty. You know, you remember how how big a deal it was to get to 100. Oh yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. Holy <laughs> crap! Oh, it's gonna blow up. Yeah. Well, 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 you see what happens when we go to 100. Well, with electric cars, we're talking about less parts and much longer miles. It is. It's gonna oh, yeah. be really interesting. Yeah, and, oh, and, and ones know. that are upgradable all the time. One of my my best friends, and when I started my business in 2000, my best friend, black guy, Kathy, would save transportation on one car for sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we would drive well, up. It gets figured out and other things get stabilized. Subscription could be a really big deal. You got to get yeah, over the whole. Just somebody get just, somebody else just, yeah, that's the problem. Someone else just had the car. But we'll get, we're going to get through this. Things are going <laughs> to, you know, we're not going to have COVID forever. Hashtag. That's, uh, let's hope, huh? <laughs> From not. your lips to God's ears. I, don't believe that. I just want. Did, did I? Answer, did we answer your question? Because I got one more, and then if we got to go. No. Yeah. We're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna go in a minute. So let's do one more. Yeah. Did you? Did we answer your question though? You did. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. So Brian. my last question is: Is okay. Final. I really want to know where do you see the auctions really going? Uh. Well, I think they're in a trough right now. They're in a pretty deep trough. Uh, but I never, ever, ever count out any part of this industry. It's, it's too damn big, right? You know, it moves and it changes. There are, there, it, it never it count out. Hey, that's a theme of tonight. Never <laughs> count out any part of this industry. No, never, no. ever. It's things change very, very slowly over a long period of time. Man. Well, I'll tell you, I am, I got goosebumps almost. I definitely got some hair standing up somewhere because I really, it's exciting to talk to you, dude. I just talk to my wife upstairs, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Larry, I want to thank you so much. And Ty, I'm going to bring you back. Here's what we're going to yeah. do. Everybody have a, you know, go refill, make a quick trip, whatever you got to do. Because we're going to run this. we got a video coming up. You're going to watch this video. we got a really cool video. So, um, Larry, thank you so much for joining us. Please keep no in problem. touch. Thank you so much for your time. This was really fun. I kind of yeah, blew through our, our time, didn't I? <laughs> ah, you're good. I love it. I love it, man. This was awesome. I can talk you. to you for another four hours. <laughs> we're going to bring you back for another time. All right. Well, yeah. thanks, guys. I appreciate thanks, it. Good talking to you, everybody. I'll be back. Thanks, Larry. Okay, so I'm, um, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a break and uh, I got a video. I want you to watch this video. Bear with me. It's the longest video I've played on this show, um, but this is a good one. And this is uh, what well, speaks for itself. Watch this video, and then when we come back in a few minutes, we're going to be live with Kurt DeRoy, Chief Commercial Officer at Jack Cooper Transport. You aren't going to want to miss this. Great businesses are relentless at finding problems and solving them. At Jack Cooper, we've established a reputation for game-changing creativity. Today, we're announcing what may be our greatest innovation yet. In vehicle transport, there are three key challenges. The first is load factor. Consider Bob, our excellent driver, going from Bowling Green to Harrisburg. Whether he transports one vehicle or seven, many costs are about the same. Same driver, same gas, same fees. If Bob delivers seven cars, we'll make a profit. If six, we'll be lucky to break even. If five, we're losing money. When you deliver four million cars annually as we do, small figures become big differences. But load factor quickly grows more complex. We use 42 different kinds of trailers for all different kinds of cars. Large cars take more space than small ones. Loading Bob's trailer well is like fitting the pieces of a puzzle. At each terminal, Jack Cooper has a team of experts optimizing the load. 
If Bob delivers seven cars, we make $270 of profit on $1,400 in revenue. If he delivers six, we make a maximum of $70 on $1,200 in revenue. Across the network, if we deliver 4 million cars with a load factor of 7 instead of 6, that saves us 100,000 trips for a total of $60 million. The second challenge, load efficiency, measures how high Bob keeps the load factor for how much of the trip. Imagine Bob has a full load of 8 cars. If Bob drives all 8 cars from A to C, he has 100% efficiency. But if he drops off four cars halfway and four cars the full way, his efficiency plummets to 75%. As load efficiency declines, so too do network velocity, or how many trips we can make with each piece of equipment, and driver capacity, or the efficient employment of our drivers. And margins decline across the network. Here's why. For each car, Jack Cooper earns a set amount plus an additional fee for every mile from origin to destination. Imagine two trips. In the first trip, Bob drives 100 miles, dropping off two cars at 10 miles and six cars at 100 miles. In the second trip, Bob drives the same 100 miles, but this time he drops off six cars at 10 miles and two cars at 100 miles. On both trips, the costs are about the same. Bob drives 100 miles either way. But on the first trip, he had the revenue from six deliveries to count against the costs of those 90 miles. On the second trip, he had the revenue of only two deliveries to count against the costs. So Bob makes us a profit on the first delivery and a loss on the second. The third challenge, optimal backhaul, examines Bob's best options after he's made his delivery. When Bob completes his delivery from Bowling Green to Harrisburg, should he just return home without freight? Every empty mile costs money. Or should he pick up a new load at Fort Wayne or Port Jersey? Optimal Backhaul combines the challenge of load factor with the challenge of load efficiency into one fierce logistics puzzle. What's the best way to get Bob back? Fail to solve the puzzle and you may lose money. Solve it and you can deliver best-in-class performance. Our genius network planning team created what we call the Da Vinci Tool to solve that puzzle for every delivery, every day. We won't bore you with the mathematics, but suffice it to say, it's some beautiful mind material. Using Bob's current location, the availability of loads around our network, his ETA, and his truck type, the Da Vinci Tool quickly ranks the top 10 options for where to send Bob next, comparing them to the economics of sending Bob home with no additional freight. This solution quantifies not only how to keep Bob's truck loaded for the maximum number of miles, but also the best fit for his truck in order to maximize his load factor. Suddenly, we have instant visibility, revealing the most likely route to the most profitable return. Rather than choosing Fort Wayne, which looks like a logical next step on the map and would generate a decent $305 profit, the Da Vinci tool calculates that Port Jersey would deliver a spectacular $2,400 instead. Multiply that by 2,000 deliveries daily and, well, you see the potential. The Da Vinci tool calculates the optimal route with unprecedented speed and accuracy. It makes us more efficient, minimizing risk, expanding network capacity, and increasing profit. It puts all our bobs to work efficiently. With the Da Vinci tool, Jack Cooper is ready to lead the pack for years. And with other tools around the corner, from collapsible trailers to carry dry goods to Uber-like apps that create markets for consumers to ship their previously owned vehicles via Jack Cooper's network, we here at Jack Cooper know that the best is yet to come. All right, everybody, welcome back to Auto Transport Intel on Tuesday nights live. Thank you for sticking around. I found that video really interesting, very informative. If you're running a business, then you'll know that those moving parts are something you have to consider. Um, and the reason I played that video is that, yes, we have Kurt DeRoy, Chief Commercial Officer at Jack Cooper Transport. He's with us now. Oh, let me move a couple. I just had Larry on. And I'm going to move a couple things here. And let me get that straight before I... Um, <laughs> hang on one second, Kurt. I've got, to, <laughs> I've got to move these lower thirds and these tiles. Okay, so we got that. Kurt 
this is so cool. You're live on Auto Transport Intel. You can see me and hear me okay? I hear you fine. Hey, thanks for having me. I tell you, that's a hard act to follow. Larry, he's uh, very knowledgeable about, uh, about the automotive industry. That's, that was neat. That was a cool interview. That's a first. Um, never had anybody from Automotive News on the channel. So that was really cool. So do me a favor. Uh, Kurt, please do say hello to the Tuesday Night's Live audience and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about more about you. Uh, hello, Tuesday Night audience. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've only been in the car oil industry for about four years, so I'm still a, a pup. And I know a lot of you guys have a lot more knowledge. But I've been in trucking for about 20 years. I live in the Midwest. Our operation uh, uh, empire is based in Kansas City. Our corporate office is in Atlanta. Uh, I've got five kids. I got a grandkid, so I'm grandkid. I'm, I'm sleeping with a grandma. That's yeah, that's a little scary. <laughs> but uh, I, I tell you, I, I joined Jack Cooper, like I said, about four years ago. And uh, like uh, Jay was saying, you know, we, we, there was uh, it was started back in 1928. 1928. Yeah, can you believe that? Close to 100 I years can't, ago. Can't actually. It's it's really hard to grasp. You know, it really right. is. You know, we are the largest uh, unionized car hauler in the industry. We're very proud of that. We've got a great workforce. But uh, you know, we've back in 1920 we bought Allied back in 2013 out of bankruptcy. So we've got a pretty good size operation. We've got over 1,200 drivers, over 37 terminals throughout the uh, Iron Bell, if you will. 1,200 drivers, 37 terminals. And I mean, uh, I think that what I like about the 1928 beginning is that uh, obviously in within 100 years, I mean, there's going to be changes and phases <laughs> and chapters. I mean, that's just how life is. Exactly. There's, there's a lot a lot of stories to tell, a lot of ups and downs. But right now we're positioned. Our, our biggest customers are GM, Ford, Chrysler, Toyota, Nissan. We've got Kia and, and Hyundai also. But uh, we're the number one hauler for both Ford and GM. We move a lot of vehicles for them. But besides car haul, we also do yard management. Uh, we also do a, dri a driveway instead of haul away. Uh, so we are somewhat diversified. And we just, we're just, we've been very busy as you, as, as you and Larry were talking about after the COVID-19, we're back now, it started back in June. We're, we're busier now than pre COVID levels. So things are really well right now. Right. And that's, and Curtis was in the live chat talking about that. So, I mean, yeah, so, so COVID hit, right. I, I, I don't, I don't want to go back through this ad nauseum because I see that too often. But <laughs> how could you summarize even the last five months? Because we've already been through the last five months have been a roller coaster. Oh, but very, very much. Just, just I guess just for the last five months, just when COVID hit, we, uh, we, we, you know, we, as as Larry pointed out, we were shut down for um, basically two months. We didn't move anything uh, when they, and then coming back up, it was a, a hard startup. Uh, a lot of the tier two, tier three suppliers had a tough time catching up and getting these guys ready. There was various protocols we had to put into place to make sure our drivers were safe, our customers were safe, communities were safe. So we had to do a lot of things to sort of reinvent, but our drivers have been great. Our employees have been great. Our customers have been great to be able to tackle this and move forward. So right now, like I said, we're back post, excuse me, pre COVID-19. We're busier now than we were then. And so, like, we were talking about how also, okay, so OEM's at 80% capacity. Is there, could you, yeah. I, I think it's great. I think it's greater than that. I mean, they are. You do? Just for, yeah, oh, yeah. I think they're, they're having some problems filling some of the shifts, but right now they are cranking, uh, especially uh, the trucks, uh, heavy vans. Uh, there's a lot of new products coming out. And uh, so the industry right now is at an all-time high. That's really interesting. So, yeah. okay, so, and that's so, that's keeping everybody busy. You got the PPE protocols. Now, there's a lot of runs you don't have to worry about that, right? If you got OEM to dealer, you're not delivering to an end customer. Do you, do you, I mean, you've got certain uh, COVID protocols you have to follow, but, right? My barking yeah, up the wrong Yeah, correct. Yeah, well, I mean, our yeah. drivers have to wear masks, very safety. We got okay. have to use the, the you know the, the, the disinfectants and thing yeah, and things like that. I mean, we do have a uh, a playbook for them, but no, we don't deliver to to uh, end users. Exactly. Hey, I, I saw you shared um, 
I want to pull up here. I'm going to pull up a couple pictures, um, if I can. You shared some information with me, and I thought it'd be cool to bring this up. Uh, okay. Let's see here. You've got okay. So we got hey, this is the Jack is back show, right? So <laughs> Jack is back. That's right. Jack is back. So what is it? What's, and I got I got a shirt. You've got a shirt. Can you can you elaborate? What does that mean? Jack is back. Well, I tell you, yes, you, you know, it's it's uh, it's our new slogan, if you will. Uh, since starting back in 1928, as we discussed uh, last last summer, 2019, we went through a, a restructuring process. Uh, we uh, we filed for uh, Chapter 11 back in August 6th. It was a uh, controlled restructuring process, and uh, we emerged out of bankruptcy on November the 4th. During that time, we had to get a lot of uh, ducks in order, if you will. We had to get the Teamsters on board. We had to get our creditors on board. Uh, the issue was uh, underlying uh, uh, under the underfunded pension central states fund. Uh, <clears throat> that is going to go insolvent here in a couple years. If, when that goes insolvent, there's about a $2 billion underfunded li liability that uh, we were going to be faced with. We went through the restructuring to extinguish that, which we did. It was a seamless operation to our customers operationally. They didn't even realize we were going through. I mean, we talked to them about, it, but as far as we didn't miss any deliveries, workforce stayed top shelf as far as on-time deliveries. And we emerged out of that on November the 4th with a clean balance sheet and with the ability now to move forward. We've got a great equity partner, Solus. Our chief uh, executive officer is Mike Riggs. He uh, is the majority shareholder. But right now we're in a very, very prime position for growth. We're going through a, uh, a uh, refleeting plan by uh, 2024, over 75 to 80% of our rigs are either gonna be replaced or refurbished. So we've got a lot going on. In fact, wow. right now we are hiring. We, we are hiring right now, we've got jobs and we need some good, we need some good drivers. Yeah, so that, that's cool. I saw that too, let me bring that, uh some of those pictures back up um in that let's see we've got okay so um i don't know if you've got any description for this picture like it great seeing right we got i'm a little bit i'm a little bit oh you're behind on, okay yeah, can you behind. see the pictures on my screen can you see that no no that's okay right and, there here we go well or how about uh, employee engagement website? Yeah, that's, I tell you, the guy, the, the guy on the right, that's Mike Riggs. He's out business with some of the drivers. We're just talking about the new fleeting products yeah. that we're going through. We're, we have a lot more employee interaction, like you were talking about the Cooper, Jack Cooper University. We're doing a lot more podcasts. Uh, we're doing a lot more uh, gr listening to our drivers to see what we can change to improve their 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 their, their work environment. It's it's really a, it's really a a, a, a ground a floor type of, of movement that uh, it's it's really paying off. Yeah, no, and that's what I was seeing. Like, uh, you know, I went to some of those websites. Um, yeah. Like so, Jack Cooper University. Um, I mean, I, I I know we we didn't have a chance to talk about that before. That sounds awesome. It reminds yeah, I mean, me of yeah, like, like Auto Hauler yeah. University was a thing. Right there, there you go. But I mean, we talk more about leadership, about customer service, just uh, like new hire orientation, what's expected. What you know, it's it's really we listen to them just because they bring a lot of great ideas to the table too. Well, that's exactly. It's not just top down information, but oh, then no, when your no. groups talk, right? When your employees talk, that's why I think that employee website, the portal, that's a great idea. Yeah, it's really working out well. So our customers like it too. They, they, they're able to also interact. We, we, we're starting a new program with one of our OEMs, driver appreciation. So we're real excited about that. We're getting them involved. We're getting dealers involved. That's awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring Ty back in. And because um, I know, I, I think we've only got a few more minutes left available i know your time is tight you're so you're traveling right now right you're, you're, you're on the detroit. road right now i'm in detroit yeah you bet yeah you're in detroit all right well and i was going to say this too is that i've seen i've seen the <laughs> trucks rolling here in kansas city um like you talked about customers customers many customers don't even know you miss a beat right or, or whatever you're how the however you phrase that no, we didn't miss a beat. We're back. Jack is back. We're back in the saddle. Things are really going well. We're really excited about the new fleeting. 
our, our age of our fleet is a little bit older, about 12 to 14 years, but we are on a big, uh, a big refleeting program. COVID-19 sort of stubbed our toe. You know, we were planning on having over 150 rigs by now back into the fleet, but that has been delayed due to uh, uh, manufacturers, even of the rigs, are uh, trying to get back up to speed. So we're we're back on track though. We're, we're moving forward. We've had the best. The last couple of months have been uh, been very good, very good months for us. Right, high demand. Well, Ty, what's going on, man? Here we hey, are. Kurt. We're live with Kurt. Ty, yeah, I like your shirt, buddy. Big one. I've followed Jack Cooper forever, and also uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm from Joplin, Missouri, and I believe Mr. Riggs started a big company in Joplin, Missouri at one time called Hookup. That's correct. I used to work for him at, at Hookup. In fact, I still live in Joplin, Ty. What? <laughs> Small world. Whoa, I just got more goosebumps. Whoa. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Well, we know a lot of things we can talk about later, but let's talk about drivers because I think that's probably a big part of your puzzle, isn't it? It really is. Again, uh, we, 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 we've got new trucks coming in. We need drivers. We've hired a, we, we've, we've hired some new recruiting people, so we're trying. Right. So here's I talked to a lot of guys. <clears throat> I used to own yeah. a fleet of 20 trucks, car haulers. I know car hauler drivers, and we'll get into that in a minute. But um, let's start off with some basics. Let's. Okay. I talked to guys, hey, you should go work for Jack Cooper. All right. Well, I don't like union. Address that for us, please. Well, unions, uh, I tell you, they got a good, pretty good program. they got a pretty good pension. I mean, they've got some pretty good work rules. Uh, we are union-based. We're very proud of our Teamsters. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, there, we, we, do, uh, we, we do have opportunities for carriers to sign up whenever there's surges, quality holds, wherever there's a situation, let's say at a VDC, where there's a, 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 a rel embargo that all of a sudden you get slammed from the railroad and you get a, a influx of units we have the ability at that time to go ahead and broker a lot of our traffic out so we can use other carriers we can use independents in situations like that as far as a day-to-day -day driver i uh, unions a, it's a very good uh, it's a very good shall we say perk package if you will i mean this is your professional car hauler standard yes right that's right these guys are true professionals we we, we uh, they they, they go beyond the call of duty at times, so they're, they're very good. But again, uh, we can use other carriers. We can use independents when there's a surge uh, situation, whether it's at the plant or at a VDC. Well, I, I asked the question because I, I do hear that. But at the same time, my, my counter to that is, is, you know, first of all, you got somebody that's willing to teach you. And yep. that's, that's pretty big in and of itself. Second, and, you know, I don't know how you, if you guys pay hour, if you pay mile, if you pay per car, you know, and we can talk about that <laughs> in a minute. But pay per, that's, a, that's an excellent question. We pay per mile, but we also pay for downtime. There are a lot of uh, additional uh, type of uh, uh, revenue streams they have. Uh, that they're, 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 they're compensated for their time. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I honestly, I think it's a great opportunity for somebody so let's talk about the I, I always have my ideal driver right so i okay. my, my favorite drivers were guys that grew up on the farm <laughs> guys that were mechanics and ex-salesmen <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were always good because you yeah. could always make them go drop the cars off and they'd end up getting a load to come out of there anyway so was, yeah. i didn't have to do anything I'm like good job <laughs> so those are my favorite and you know <laughs> for, that is great <laughs> I did. I, like that I did. Too. Just run in there. Perfect, and... right up on it. Ex sales. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because like your, here's your the thing: all are... cars is right. Farmers. The most crazy, crazy. I mean, if you really think about it, it is <laughs> unreal crazy. Especially when you're talking stingers and you're stacking cars, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, that's it's 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 an art. I mean, then when you have the weather. Think, think, think about the, the environment when it's cold or icy and you're up there at 15, 16. I mean, totally. It, it, oh, it, 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 it can be a little hairy at times. That is, well, that's dangerous. So one of the things that I do to try to, somebody says, hey, I want to learn to haul cars. So here's how I do it. The interview is okay. like this. This is the hardest job you'll ever have. I'll lie to you every day, I promise. And you're going <laughs> to hate life most of the time. You, you want to haul cars? <laughs> But it's being honest, and the reality of it is, is my turnover for my 20 trucks was virtually zero. I mean, once we got a guy in, got him established, 
He didn't go anywhere. He was happy. Well, that's, you know, he got money. that's a very good, you know, our turnover rate is very, very low. You know, industry for trucking is, is 90, almost 100%. We're very low, 20, 25% on, on, on our turnover. Which, uh, we're very, very proud of that. Right. That's yeah. a testament, yeah, that you take care of your drivers. Yeah. And yeah. I tell you, our, 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 the age of our, of our, of our drivers, are, it is in, increasing. So we are looking yeah. for younger that's guys statistic. to come in and take, take over. Yeah. Right. And that's why I think the social media outreach is a great idea. Yeah, we, I, we, we, we do too. Employment engagement for the future is going to hopefully bring a lot of a lot of fruits. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the other thing that I was, uh, you primarily, your equipment, I heard you talking about your equipment. Your equipment is primarily day cabs. Is that right? Yes. Yes, it is. We've got a few, just a few uh, uh, sleepers, but mainly day cabs. Right. Which, by the way, I'm a big fan of day cabs because oh, yeah. you can always get that big car behind the cab. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes you, can. you can't do that with a sleeper truck, right? That though that that is true, and you know load factor is the key because we want to you know increase the load factor as much as we can. The uh, 80 foot law has really helped us on that, but we need a little bit more weight to really to, to maximize. But uh, we um, and and we buy specialized rigs for what we're hauling. It's a lot different at a at a truck manufacturing facility than it is a sedan, as you guys are well aware of. So we do have the various uh, we we've got over 45 different types of rigs within our fleet. Wow. What we yeah, need I'm to do on that note, what we need to do is coordinate a time where on Cars on the Move on a Friday, Ty can, uh, you know, get to you know see somebody, see something. We should coordinate that. That'd be really cool. I think that would be very cool. I think I'd also, I'd like, you, like to bring Curtis Rhodes back on, the guy that yes. we the, uh, the live chat. He's very knowledgeable, and he could really what give city you some is specifics. He in? He's in Kansas City. Well, all right. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> Oh, hey, by the way, yeah, I want to thank you, man. I got this cool mug. Check that hey, out. Hey, you like it? I'm good. Yeah, Jack Cooper. Your shirts? You got, hey, we got you some swag. Yeah, I got you some like stickers. That. Yeah, man. Hey, I really want to compliment you guys. I think this venue is excellent. It's a great vehicle. You guys are doing a great job. It's really top shelf. Thank you. You guys are really true professionals. I watched you a couple weeks ago. You are having a little bit of uh, technical <laughs> difficulty. Oh. Smooth. I'm telling you, you guys went right through that. So I'm very, very happy that i was able to join you guys very privileged and honored especially to follow a man larry but jack is back guys we uh we we are back in the saddle that That's is awesome. awesome news man and thank you for sharing it here for giving us your time thank you so much kurt we really appreciate you it anytime and and we'll stay in touch and i'd like to follow up and like i said we've got a great staff we, we've got some management that i would like for them to participate in this forum because I think it's very helpful for the industry and very knowledgeable. So we'll look forward to the future. Love it. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah, we'll talk Thanks, to you Kurt. soon, buddy. All yeah, right, we'll stay in touch. We'll okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care. All right, Ty, I'll let you go as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and end this meeting. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. That was amazing. Um, and a first. Um, and I got more first coming up. I mean, I've got some, I got some cool interviews lined up. Um, and you know what, by the way, hey, let's check that out. I want to go into the live chat real quick. I saw, I saw, thank you guys for talking about, you know, I saw some Carmack stuff. All right, Curtis says go Chiefs because he's in Kansas City. Well, let's hope. I mean, definitely go Chiefs, but let's hope we're on track for an NFL season um, because we just, we finally, we got Mahomes and, you know, everything's amazing. Let's do this. It's the end of the show. It's officially the end of the show. Guys, I want to thank you so much for sticking around. Again, I, w I really want to thank Larry Veliquette of Automotive News and Kurt DeRoy, CCO at Jack Cooper Transport. Thank you guys for making this an amazing episode. This was episode 152. And um, I I'm just, I'm really happy that we're, again, we're, we continue to break out and around um, across the ecosystem, OEMs, dealers, auctions, carriers, brokers, shippers, equipment, if you've got something that you think needs to be talked about on Auto Transport Intel, maybe you're in one of these webinars, I'm seeing it. You're in a webinar with the auctions, you're in a webinar with the dealers, Hey, you're in a webinar with the brokers or the insurance company or a repo, and you hear Auto Transport talked about. 
but it's kind of mentioned and yeah, well, it'd be great to talk about that, but let's move on to the next topic. That's when you think, yeah, Auto Transport Intel, that's where you can talk about that topic. Let them know, send them an email, contact them through LinkedIn, share the channel. This is cool. I made a, I made a random phone call today and I talked to a guy and he said, Hey, are you that YouTube guy? I'm like, yeah, it is. It's me. It's like, yeah, I've totally, I've seen your show. I couldn't believe it. You know, here's what I don't understand. And I have this conversation as well. The metrics do not match what's happening. I don't get it. I don't know how some of these videos, they only get a few hundred views. And yet all these people are finding out about the channel and I'm not going to worry about it. I don't know. I can't parse it, but I appreciate you guys being a part of it. You're, you're witnessing a movement in auto transport, and thank you for your participation, your contribution, and reaching out to the network. Let people know if there's a way I can help, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Like I said before, next week we're going to do the Assertus. It's a driver recruitment show. It is it's about driver recruitment. It's about carrier recruitment. It's about education in the final mile delivery space over the road there's a lot to talk about so um and that's just one sector of what assertus does assertus does a lot of stuff so i want to thank murphy auto transport i want to thank superflow systems i want to thank assertus and i also want to thank jack cooper thank you guys so much for being a part of auto transport intel for helping grow this channel please remember to leave a like share with your friends subscribe and most of all be safe be profitable i'll see you guys i'll be back live on thursday and dispatching live i hope to see you then let me know how i can help take care peace out and i'll talk to you soon